we will make a start. I think we will make a start now uh, and uh, kick off, even though a few people are still joining us. So, um, so this in this webinar, we will explain to you how the book metrics and how the book reports work in re in release five, and we will also. Um, explain how you can calculate cost per use at the title level. So before we go into the detail, there's a couple of things to note, particularly about book reports. And that is, it's that content providers deliver books in different ways. Um, now, as you all know, some platforms deliver books as a single PDF, all the chapters are contained within one PDF. Other platforms uh, deliver books in chunks by section or by chapter. Uh, so this causes uh, some difficulty. In release four of the Council Code of Practice, this difference was dealt with, with uh, by two separate reports. The BR1 report, which is a report for entire books delivered as a single PDF, and the BR2 report for books delivered in chapters. Now, this presented a couple of problems. The first problem was these two types of reports made it quite difficult for, or indeed impossible, for librarians to compare usage across the different platforms. And for the BR2 report, uh, there was a further difficulty in that librarians, because they buy books at the title level, want to calculate cost per use at the title level. They were unable to do so. So the new metrics that have been developed for release five address both of those problems. So I'm going to kick off by uh, talking about the new metrics in release five, and then we'll look at some examples of how they play out in terms of user actions and what you see in the reports. So the first thing to note about the counter metrics is that they come in pairs, investigations and requests. Now, investigations relate to user actions, which are about exploring a content item. So, for example, a user viewing an abstract or a viewer looking at a book preview. Requests relate to user actions which are about accessing full text. And that full text can be HTML, PDF, EPUB, or indeed any other format which may exist or may be developed uh, in time. Now, as you can see in this diagram, all user actions are investigations. Viewing the HTML full text or a PDF or EPUB are requests, but they are also investigations. Now, I'm sure I can hear you say that all sounds very confusing. Uh, so I'm going to talk through some examples of what happens in real, real life uh, that I hope will bring those um, rather dull sounding metrics to life. And I must uh, give great thanks to Athena Hoopner who created these slides, the next two slides I'm going to use. Um, so I do want to make sure she has full credit for those. So here we have a book platform and a very busy user. And we'll just have a look at what this user is doing, clicking away on this platform. So the user arrives and she clicks about these proceedings. Uh, she wants to find out a little bit about this book. Uh, so she's investigating uh, the book and then she decides that she'll have a look here at this first chapter, Dictionary Learning Inform Deep Neural Networks, etc. So she clicks onto the full text, HTML. Uh, she decides she likes what she sees and she decides that she is going to download the PDF. Then she has a look at the second chapter here, structure aware noise reduction, etc. And click, she has downloaded the PDF of that chapter as well. Now, at this point, she decides that she likes this book so much, 
uh, she's not going to continue to download individual chapters. She is going to download the entire book. So uh, there we are. She's quite busy and she's made all those clicks and downloads. So let's have a look at how that translates to counter release five metrics. So the first uh, metric we have are total item investigations and we have the figure of five. Now that's quite easy to see actually on this diagram. One, two, three, four, five clicks, five investigations. Uh, unique item investigations is three. And the reason is that she has investigated three unique items. This first chapter is an item. The second chapter is an item and the whole book itself is an item. So those are our three items. Now, the total item requests are four. She requested the HTML of the first chapter and the PDF, that makes two. She requested the uh, PDF of the third, uh, second, uh, second chapter, that's three, three uh, requests. Uh, sorry, three requests, yeah. And she also requested the book that is for, uh, for uh, total item requests. Um, but the unique item requests are three. And this is because uh, you'll remember here that she clicked on the HTML of this uh, first chapter and also the PDF. So although those were two requests, uh, it's one unique request making the total. Uh, item requests, making the total three. And then the really useful thing in release five, you'll see that the unique title investigations and the unique title requests are one. And that's because all this activity, all these different clicks that the user made, all relate to this one single book, this one uh, unique title. So we'll look a little bit uh, in depth now at those uh, metrics and I hope it will make some sense. So we start off with the total item investigations, total item requests. So the total item investigations, as we've seen, is the total number of times a content item or information about a content item was investigated by a user. So if you like, you could call it the total of the clicks. The total item requests is the total number of full text, uh, uh, full text requests, HTML, PDF, or EPUB uh, requested by the user. Um, I was asked a question recently, which I think is quite useful. And that question was, well, that's all very well, but what if a user looked at a summary of a book, for example, a bibliographic record, but then decided not to request it? Well, the answer is that that would be total item investigations, one, total request, zero. Um, I have just seen somebody say they can't hear me very well. Uh, does anybody else have a problem? Uh, if so, let me know in the chat box. OK. Uh, moving on. Uh, we're going to have a look at unique item investigations and unique item requests. So this unique item metric tells us about the number of unique content items. For example, as we saw, that could be chapters, it could be a book uh, investigated or requested by a user. So a good example, I think, is if a user had requested the HTML of a chapter of a book and had also requested a PDF of the same chapter, the count would be unique item request one, because both those requests relate to the same uh, unique item. And then moving on to my favorite metric, I think, uh, unique title investigations, unique title requests. Unique, uh, now these metrics, tell us about the number of unique book titles investigated or requested by a user. So again, a good example, if a user requests two chapters from the same book, that count is unique title request one. Um, so 
because both of those chapters are from the same book. So in summary, I think we can say that, oh, sorry, yes, I beg your pardon. Uh, one other point I wanted to make is that the unique title metric is only used in counted book reports. You don't see the unique title metric in the other reports. Um, it only applies to the books. And it is the key metric for calculating cost per use at the title level. And that will work however uh, the platform delivers its book. And that's why this metric allows you to compare usage at the book level across different, uh, different publisher platforms. Uh, so I could think a good takeaway, unique title requests is the key metric for calculating cost per use. Now, before we go on, I don't want to make this overly complicated, but I do want to mention attributes uh, because this is useful information that you will find in the counter-release uh, master reports. And it um, is information that really helps understand the use of, of the content. Now, one of the attributes is called data type. And I've put a list on this slide of all the different data types. Um, but in book reports, uh, you are most likely to see book as the data type. And in journal reports, you are most likely to see journal as the data type. So here I have an example of a title master report. Now, this title master report is actually about journals, the journal we've called Journal 6 here. And here you can see this column and it's telling you about the data type. In this case, a journal, but of course, if it was a, a reporting on books, it would be book. Then the other attribute uh, that you might want to be aware of is section type. And this is the attribute when content is delivered in chunks, as we call them, sections. Uh, and this describes what that section or chunk of content is. So a book most typically may be accessed by the chapter. Uh, content in a journal is, I think, always accessed by article. So again, we can have a look at how that plays out in the uh, title master reports. And you can see here, this is our journal six again. And here is our column with section type. And in this case, the section type is article. But of course, as I say, in a book report, it's more likely to be chapter. So I think that, uh, am I right? I'm just going, yeah. So I think that brings us to the end of our section on the book metrics. Quite a lot to take in, I know. Uh, but before I hand over to Paula, who will talk about the book reports, um, do you have any questions we can answer on the metrics? Oh, there's a question here from Jennifer. What is the format of titles using Adobe Digital Editions? Um, I don't know, Jennifer, actually, what, what that format is. Uh, but as I say, um, I will find out for you uh, and we'll put it in the FAQs. But Release 5 will deal with all, all types of um, formats, as you'll see when we look at the the reports because in release five uh, we don't break down the format types like we did in release four. Uh, any other questions? No. Any other questions on the metric types before we we move on? No. Okay. Well, we'll have a we'll have an opportunity at the end uh, to ask some more questions. So, Paula, I'm going to hand over to you and you can um, talk us through the book reports. Okay, so the next section, we're going to talk about the book reports in a little more detail for counter release five. So these are all relating to book usage. A title master report, which is TR, shows the activity across all metrics for entire titles. Now we are talking about books today, Titles can also sometimes refer to journals, but for the purposes of this presentation, we're talking about books. So this report contains a lot of information. 
For example, the type of content investigated or requested, the data type, the section type, and the year of publication. Now, the TR can be filtered according to user needs, and it also has three standard views, which apply specifically to book usage. Next slide, please. So, TRB1 is a standard view, which reports on book requests. You do need to know that it excludes gold OA books. It only reports on those books where access is controlled. So by book request, we mean that a user has viewed or downloaded a full text content item. TRB1 uses just two of the counter metric types, total item requests and unique title requests, which report on those books where access is controlled. Next slide, please. So TRB2 is the standard view that shows relating to book access denied. Now, this shows where users were denied access to books, and that may be because the simultaneous use or concurrency licenses were exceeded, or the institution did not have a license for the book. So this report uses two metric types, limit exceeded and no license. Next slide, please. Okay, and then we come on to TRB3. So this is the standard view that shows all applicable metric types broken down by access type. This one's a little more detailed, so it uses six metric types in total, which you can see in that, that end column there. Currently, most of the ebook reports that are available via counter concern books that are behind a paywall. So this report may or may not be one which you would use a great deal at the moment. However, if the number of OA gold books increases, it's likely to become increasingly important. We're just going to take a, a short pause now before we look at how the book reports actually play out on different platforms. Um, so if there are any questions, please pop them in the, the chat box. I'll just keep an eye on that for a, for a second here. Okay, there's a stunned silence. Okay, Lorraine, do you want to move on to the, the next slide? Have we? Okay, thank you. Okay, so we're now going to look in a little more detail at how the reports actually play out on different platforms. So we've already mentioned that um, provide, content providers provide books in, in different formats. So you may have one provider will provide a, a book as a single PDF. Other providers may provide them as with each chapter being a single PDF. So in this example, what we've got is a title master report. What we have done is actually hide some of the columns so that we can get this on the slide because this, this is quite a, a large complex report. So we're looking at the big book of chapters and the librarian concerned has bought this book on platform A. Platform A delivers books as single PDFs, and this particular book has 27 separate chapters. However, all 27 chapters are delivered together as a single item. The book is the item in this example. So the total item requests are one, the unique item requests are also one, and the unique title requests are also one. Okay, in the standard view, TRB1, the metrics shown will be total item requests one, unique item requests one. We do need to highlight that the attribute for the section type is not shown in the standard view, which is one of the pre canned summaries of the master report, just to make you aware of that. Next slide, please. So in the second scenario, we still have the big book of chapters. This is platform B, and platform B delivers books as individual chapters. So this particular user has decided they want to download all of the chapters for the big book of chapters. And because there are 27 chapters, the total item requests are 27. The unique item requests are 27. But the unique title requests remains at one. So in the standard view TRB1, the way that the metrics are shown are total item requests 27, unique title requests 1. 
And again, the attribute section type is not shown in the standard view. Okay, next slide, please. So just a few notes about the platform differences. Um, in addition to the platforms that deliver chapters only or books only, some platforms take a slightly different approach to the user experience. So for example, you may have content providers who deliver chapters in a zip file. These platforms typically report each of the individual chapters as unique items. You then have some other providers who deliver uh, I, who deliver books as a single PDF, which may be created on the fly. So you have individual chapter PDFs. When a user requests a whole book, these platforms also report each of the individual chapters as unique items. Next slide, please. So one of the, um, the things that we do that is very, very helpful when you're looking at counter R5 reports, the unique title requests is, it's unique no matter what platform you're, you're using. So the numbers of unique item requests might vary between sites. If you have a provider who is delivering a book as one PDF, and you have another provider who's delivering the same book in 27 different chapters, the key metric that stays the same is the unique title request. I'm just going to hand back to Lorraine to wrap up at this point. Thank you, Paula. Um, before I talk about the comparability between release four and release five, uh, we might just want to stop and ask if people have any specific questions on the reports. I know that Azade Brown, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, um, asked which will we be using for the SCONOR next year and um, the, these are the SCONOR reports, the, um, the sort of aggregated reports for all UK academic libraries. Um, I'm not sure which report you'll, you will be using um, but I, uh, that would be up to SCONOR <laughs> to say, um, but I imagine um, that as long as you're working on the unique title metrics uh, you will be able to compare usage across all the platforms. Um, so that's the answer to that question. Do we have any more questions on the reports before we go forward? Realise we're giving you a lot of information, so no? Okay, all right. So um, I just want to talk a little bit about the comparability between Release 4 and Release 5. Um, and this is very important for many librarians who want to uh, look at trends across time and want to compare uh, across time, but also across across the different releases, counter releases. Um, now, if you are looking at a platform which delivers books as a single PDF, uh, that is a fairly easy comparison. And you would look at your release uh, for BR1 report uh, and your release five reports for the unique title requests and data type book. And using that metric and that uh, attribute, you will be able to compare very neatly to the BR1 reports that you had previously. <coughs> Sorry. Now, for platforms that deliver books as chapters, uh, the comparison between Release 4 and Release 5 can be done using the Release 4 uh, requests in Report BR2 and the total item requests and data type chapter in Release 5. So again, that will give you a pretty straightforward um, comparison across, across time there. Now, I must tell you, though, that there are a few platforms where it will be impossible to compare across the releases. And this is for legacy reasons. A few platforms that deliver books as a single PDF reported full text requests at the chapter level in uh, the BR2 report. So what uh, was happening there was 
a single PDF was being uh, delivered to the user, but in your reports, each chapter was counted separately in BR2. Now, unfortunately, there isn't really a way that you can compare uh, across across the releases uh, for the platforms that were doing that. And, and I do want to make clear, uh, it's just a legacy reason that a few platforms were doing that and not that they were doing anything wrong. Um, it, it's just the way it um, panned out for those for those particular um, particular platforms. Uh, oh, now Hannah's just said, could we repeat what we said about OA books? Uh, yeah, Hannah, I think uh, maybe maybe that was uh, Paula was talking about that in the. Um, standard view, the JR1 report, the open access books are excluded. I'll just go back to that slide and just show you actually. I'll just go back there. Sorry, I'll just go back to that. Oops. Yeah. Yes. So, sorry, I beg your pardon. TRB1 report. Um, in that report, uh, you will only see books which are behind the paywall any open gold open access books are excluded from that report and the reason for that hannah is because lots of librarians want to calculate cost per title excluding any oa gold um, the oa gold usage is in the other reports and it is in the master report but for ease of use for people who want to do that quick cost per use analysis, we've excluded it from the TRB1. Um, now, as uh, Paula said, there aren't a great many OA gold books at the moment. Um, so that's perhaps not such a big an issue in the book reports uh, as it is for the journal reports. Uh, but it's just well worth noting when you look at that TRB1 that it excludes gold open access. I hope, Hannah, that was clear. Um, let me know if if that needs any further explanation. Uh, and we've got some other questions here. Anna, hello, Anna. Good to see you here. Which platform is re reporting single PDF by the count of the chapters? Is that noted on the counter site? Good question, Anna. Uh, it's not noted on the counter site. And actually, I don't necessarily know every single one of them. Um, I think there are a couple of platforms that I do know about. Uh, one, one is the Springer platform and one is the IOP platform uh, where um, they were uh, reporting in BR, BR2. So those are the ones where you will uh, really it is impossible to compare ac across the releases. So Hannah says, could we have any more detail about those that are not able to compare between release four and release five? Um, when, when you say detail, Hannah, do, do you mean the names of those platforms? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I Actually, I think that's a very good point. Um, I don't necessarily have a list of them at my fingertips, uh, but we can do some investigation and we will try and put a list out there. I think that would be helpful to everybody, Hannah. Uh, so it's a good, good question. And, and we'll try and make sure that we can get that list there for you. Uh, so are there any other questions? I don't think I've missed any. Yeah. Uh, I'm just another point to note on that comparability. Of course, when those publishers are uh, providing the release five reports uh, over time, clearly that issue will go away um, because we have the attributes in there. Um, so and of course, the unique title metric. So that is a report uh, that is an issue which would not occur again. Oh dear. 
Uh, any other? Oh, sorry, I just dropped my mouse on the floor there. Uh, any? Oh, that was a bit of a disaster. Um, any other? Oh, I'll just go back to one side. Uh, are there any other questions for us before I break everything? No, I don't think so. Well, thank you all very much for joining us. Uh, and if you do have any queries following uh, the webinar and you want to follow up by email, please do contact Paula or, or contact me and we'll be happy to answer. And as I say, we'll share the um, we'll share this uh, webinar afterwards. Uh, so, yep, uh, yes, we will share the recording of the webinar. Definitely. And you can, of course, share it with your colleagues. Uh, yes, uh, Deborah's just asked if we will share the slides. Very happy to share the slides as well. Okay, well, I think on that note, uh, thank you all very much for attending. Do you want to say goodbye to everyone, Paula? Uh, yes, and um, I'll just mention, so there is the County YouTube channel. Okay. Either Lorraine or myself, um, oh, sorry, there yeah. are emails you can, you can contact us on. Uh, and there is the main Project Counter website, which we're constantly trying to update and add information to. Thanks, Anna. Thanks for your comment there. Okay, Paula, I think I'll, I'll close it down now. Okay, thank you, Lorraine.